This is Steve Carlson. This is part two of the argument I'll be presenting to a statewide panel on the Al Franken election contest on Monday. The issue before the panel is one arising under the Constitution of the United States. And so federal law and the Constitution apply to the issue, which given the present posture of the case is this. Can the Minnesota State Legislature in passing 20912 create its complete and workable law which must be given effect. In other words, must the Minnesota courts follow this law to gather evidence and certify it to the U.S. Senate of serious, material, and deliberate violations of Minnesota election provisions? And even though the Constitution, I submit, has been violated because this panel in the instant contest did, in fact, act as judge improperly and unconstitutionally, and everybody knows that, by purporting to ferret out and suppress facts you thought are just related to Secretary Ritchie's claim that he should not be a party. And Simon's submission indicates he realizes he is a respondent even if not a party. You kept all the testimony and all the record of this case except the election certificate which was unlawfully issued from the U.S. Senate. But you presented or allowed Al Franken and Mark Ritchie to present to the Senate only that as a fact, the election certificate was issued to Al Franken in accordance with subdivision two of 204C.40, which bars issuance when a contest is pending, which in this case, on December 19th, 2014, this contest was pending. Defendants have not and cannot establish that there were two contests, there was only one concerning the validity of the election. So as applied, this 20912 violated the US Constitution violated Article 1, Section 5, but also Section 4. The panel's action is void and a nullity, and unconstitutional insofar as what you allow. However, vaguely and lawfully, to be sent to the Senate. However, the remainder of Minnesota Statutes 20912 uh, uh, under Minnesota Supreme Court precedent is still good law, and contestant is entitled to the remedies provided in the Minnesota law. This is required not only for the issue of excluding Franken from the Senate, whether or not he would be seated, that's one issue, but also for the expulsion of Franken from the Senate for his serious, deliberate, material violation as set out in the notice of contest. And now also the serious, material, and deliberate action uh, uh, violation of election law of 204C.40 subdivision 2 and 20912, since he, being a judge, yet sought to block the function of this law. It is also germane to the Senate for its regulation of these violations by statute. I have drawn attention to, in whatever manner uh, it wishes, it can act on this expulsion exclusion, discipline, or regulation through passing laws. This panel must follow through in releasing the evidence already collected, but also in allowing complete and full discovery on those grounds, all to be sent along with the full record of this panel's proceedings to the U.S. Senate. Now, if you look at Franken's case, submitted in a long footnote of his brief in opposition, there are really not legion cases, as he claims, but 10 cases. And one of the tendencies of those cases is to undercut the right of the state of Minnesota to pass legislation providing for recount contests or for any contests which might lead to the expulsion, exclusion of senators. And that is the central question here today. Can Minnesota do this? Can it create this law? And then must it enforce this law? Please note that Al Franken has already embraced and the Minnesota Supreme Court has already embraced the state's right to reach into the Coleman-Franken race in 2008 with an election contest under this law. It was a straight recount. But now, in 2014, Franken turns face and submits cases against this motion, which is basically just to fulfill the law of 209.12 and 204.C.40 and says Minnesota can't do this in 2014. And by the way, 204C.40 just says that you can issue an election uh, petition when a contest such as this was still pending, if that isn't clear. 
And now he says that Minnesota can't follow this law in 2014, even though he benefited from finding additional votes in 2008 by allowing wide-ranging judicial intervention in 2008. This panel must enforce these provisions of the Minnesota election law. Loden versus City of Warren, a 1915 case, citing Sari versus Gleason and other cases, which said that uh, the state does have a right to prevent uh, corrupt acts in an election. And it found that, quote, it is well settled that when an unconstitutional element in a statute can be rejected and still leave a complete and workable law, the valid part must be given effect unless the invalid part is so connected with the subject matter and purpose of the statute as to overcome the presumption that the legislature intended to keep within the limits prescribed by the Constitution and to have the law become operative within such limits. And what is before this panel is whether under this standard 209.12 and 204C.40 subdivision 2 uh, must be enforced. And the answer is yes, they must be enforced. Now it's also noteworthy that Franken has never objected to these provisions as unconstitutional. And a big part of that has got to be that that is how he got to the U.S. Senate in the first place in 2008. In a real sense, he's the choice of the court. But even though Franken can't challenge the constitutionality of this provision, or has not, the panel is faced with questions about constitutionality now. Now that he got that unlawful election certificate out to Washington and got sworn in, he claims court action under this law is unconstitutional. I said this case arises under the Constitution. There is no doubt that it arises under the First Amendment, 14th Amendment, 15th Amendment, and 19th Amendment. And these have to do with elections. And preserving the vote found somewhere, but where, is an important question. But it also arises under Article I, Section 5, and also under another section that must be read in pari materia with Section 5, and that's Section 4 of Article I of the Constitution. None of the cases Frank and Cites discuss Section 4 at all. I only learned of it from reading Ex parte Yarbrough. But when Section 4 is analyzed alongside Section 5, the arguments implied by Franken's cases begin to fall apart. And we look at the U.S. Constitution in a different way, because Yarbrough teaches us that the very right to vote for congressional representatives, senator or U.S. representative, is to be found in Section 4. And so when you look at Nixon, Franken's case of Walter Nixon, an impeached federal judge, and you get to the issue of the involvement of political questions, which cannot be adjudicated by the courts, but only the Chamber of Commerce, the House or the Senate. You have to distinguish Nixon from this case, Carlson. In Nixon, the D.C. Circuit Court found that, quote, Nixon's claim that Senate Rule 11 violates the impeachment trial clause of the U.S. Constitution is non-justiciable, unquote. Nixon argued that because the House of Representatives did the fact-finding for impeachment and the Senate was excluded from that, it violated the Constitution because fact-finding was part of impeaching, and that was committed to the Senate. Well, he was a judge and presented a sophisticated argument, but it was rejected because he raised a political question for which the courts could not provide judicially discoverable and manageable standards for resolving. Nixon argued that the word try in the clause committing this to the Senate had to mean the same as any court, and you couldn't try the accused while eliminating the fact-finding. Seems to make sense, except that the impeachment clause itself committed this function to the House as part of the whole impeachment process. But the circuit court found that the framers did not intend to impose additional limitation on the form of the Senate proceedings. And Franken's argument, if he would make it, is that by any further proceedings at this point, acting on these two Minnesota statutes, 209.12, the contest provision, and 204C.40 subdivision 2, the time for issuing the certificate provision, this would impose additional limitations on the form of the Senate proceedings. But very clearly, Minnesota statute which must be enforced is designed not to interfere with the right to exclude Franken, which is left up to the Senate by Article I, Section 5. It just gathers and certifies information to the Senate. Furthermore, it's clear that Article I, Section 4 does intend to 
the framers did intend to impose additional limitations on the form of the Senate proceedings. And Minnesota has done so, quite legally. Again, none of Franken's cases mention Section 4. And I think that's because, just like this, the parties in such contests are not really interested in free and fair elections. They just want to see which major party is going to occupy the Senate. They don't care. Uh, they don't care about free and fair uh, elections. They don't care enough to examine whether the states have adequately prescribed free and fair election laws which comply with the Constitution. In this case, that is the issue. We have counts and politicians and really, we, we have courts, I'm sorry, and politicians and really all the judges here in the Minnesota Supreme Court are also politicians elected who are collectively and systematically shielding from any remedy under the Constitution of the United States this large set of serious material and deliberate violations of the provisions of Minnesota election law. It's important to note that Section 4 requires the states to prescribe the manner in which U.S. Senators and members of Congress are to be selected by the voters of Minnesota. That's my point, that Minnesota has done this. Minnesota has a right to do this under the U.S. Constitution, and Al has tried to block it. And Mark Ritchie and Governor Dayton and Lori Swanson have for several years attempted to block and cover up violations of Minnesota election laws. And now that has resulted in the disenfranchisement of independent voters because of the disenrollment of the Minnesota Independence Party as a major political party. Further, the circuit court in Nixon said the Constitution's impeachment clause, quote, must be read as a grant of authority to the Senate to determine whether an individual should be acquitted or convicted, unquote. And Franken very explicitly does raise this argument now, that the entire determination of whether or not to exclude him in this contest is granted to the Senate. And that's why he includes this case. But on this, too, Franken runs into problems. First, this is not just about exclusion on January 6th. He can be expelled or he can be uh, disciplined. Further, the Senate and the House can and should regulate these matters, and they are regulated by the U.S. Constitution, which both Minnesota and the Senate must respect. Secondly, this authority is not, as in the Walter Nixon case, a straight grant of authority to the U.S. Senate. It is split. Part is assigned by the Constitution and not just Senator House rules or even merely statute, certainly not mere judicial convenience or the convenience of major party candidates, part of the grant of authority is assigned to the state of Minnesota. The state has in fact acted, and this panel in the Minnesota Supreme Court and the U.S. Supreme Court, and also the Senate, must enforce or otherwise recognize and respect these Minnesota laws. So this is not barred from further judicial review by any notion that it's a political question over which courts have no jurisdiction. This panel has the jurisdiction and duty to enforce these entire statutes insofar as they are constitutional. And enforcing it is constitutional. One of the older cases Franken submits is Smith versus Polk, an Ohio Supreme Court case from 1939. In Smith, the issue was, could a contest in Ohio courts even be maintained after the Secretary of State had certified the result and issued a certificate of election to the contestee, here Al Franken. And you can feel that as soon as Al rested that piece of paper, totally non-binding, from his friend Mark Dayton, he had this case waiting in the wings. And yet, it is a weak case for Franken, and it really does not apply here, except to recognize that I was right on December 18th, 2014, when I argued that in matters of exclusion, or even expulsion or regulation, the U.S. Senate are the sole judges of the contest or, or any other action they might take. And he can use this case uh, except uh, for this motion and subsequent proceedings because, but he can't because the current motion is not about the status quo. It is about the status quo before he and Governor Dayton and Lori Swanson and Mark Ritchie violated the law in issuing the certificate. And as I say, this illegal action by the Democrats also violated Article 1, Section 5, and Section 4 as well. Because in accordance with the Constitution, the Minnesota legislature has prescribed all these laws, and they are to be followed in an election and in a contest. And it is the validity of this election 
and the actions of issuing the certificate that are at stake. And as I showed above, Section 4 is in itself violated. Uh, but also, it modifies Section 5, because, again, Section 4 is a grant of authority to the Minnesota State Legislature, which, in turn, has bound this panel, the Minnesota Supreme Court, the Secretary of State, the Democratic and Republican parties, the Governor, and Al Franken and his counsel. And it does impose additional limitations on the form of Senate uh, proceedings. And all this is outside of the Senate proceedings and Senate rules. It arises from the regulation by the U.S. Constitution. It's a grant of power to the legislature, which can be read and construed as a complete and workable law. The valid part must be given effect. The presumption that the legislature intended to keep within the limits prescribed by the Constitution and to have the law become operative within such limits must be deferred to and enforced by this panel. Smith also supports my position that this issue of the jurisdiction of the Senate did not just arise by virtue of the U.S. Senate seating Franken. Rather, the Senate's power to adjudicate such right immediately attached by virtue of Section 5 of Article 1 of the Constitution. Whether pending this adjudication, the credentials should be accepted, the oath administered, and the full right accorded to participate in the business of the Senate to Franken was a matter within the discretion of the Senate. However, contrary to the Ohio Court's finding, this panel does have jurisdiction of this proceeding, even insofar as 20912 exists to contest an election. And a contest going to the exclusion of Franklin on January 6th is not the sole purpose of the Minnesota law, since the Senate also has the discretion to expel or discipline Franken or to pass statutes to regulate these practices including Franken's and Ritchie's conduct in the contest. The Ohio court also erred where they held the Senate has its authority to decide exclusion as a legislative body. And so Article 1 of uh, Section 1 is irrelevant. The Senate exercises its judiciary capacity pursuant to Section 5. And although not addressed by any of Franken's cases, it is Section 4 that stands in pari materia with Section 5, imposing limitations on the form of the Senate action and granting authority to the state of Minnesota to prescribe and enforce its prescription of the manner of selection of U.S. Senators and U.S. Representatives from the state of Minnesota. And I urge you to follow that mandate. In conclusion, you must not preclude Senate action and jurisdiction by further suppressing this evidentiary proceeding. That would be as if the U.S. House has suppressed all its testimony in recommending impeachment of Walter Nixon to the Senate. The impeachment proceeding would be null and void, and the proceedings to this date are null and void and unconstitutional. But there is a constitutional path forward, and the law and constitution bind this panel to pursue that path and grant the remedies I seek. I may have a few additional videos. I've only gone through two of these uh, cases, really. <clears throat> 